Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, so we're going to continue from where we left off and as violent as it was, we deleted Jack in the last tutorial and we actually left him, some of him behind. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and delete him again, as if it wasn't hard the first time. And uh, let's go ahead and carry on with Phil. Alright, so what we want to do now is make it a little bit stickier when we attack. Um, and we also want to determine when to enter attack uh, target mode and when not to. So by default, I'm going to say we're not in target mode and we're not facing target. Um, I'm going to leave target set for now because we will be setting that relative to whichever uh, target is closest and nearest the center of the screen. Uh, but we'll do that a little bit later. So let's go back into our player controller script. And then go back down to our <clears throat> movement region. And then inside our movement, uh, all the way at the bottom of our movement function, we're going to be adding a few things in here. So I'm going to add an if statement. So we'll say if is attacking and is grounded. And we'll also add a and is face target. Okay. So if we if we're attacking and we're grounded um actually instead of is face target we'll use uh is target mode okay uh so if we're attacking we're grounded and it's target mode we'll just add uh, is face target equals true just like so and we'll also have uh so this is where we're going to add the stickiness uh, so what we'll do is we'll get the distance of our character compared to our target. Um, and if it's below a certain threshold, we'll move the character towards the target. So I'm going to create a variable for that threshold. So just underneath our combat header, I'm going to create a public float. And we'll just call this a sticky target distance. <laughs> Don't really know what to call it. Sticky target distance and for... By default, we'll set it to one. I'm also going to hide this is attacking in the inspector. Don't need to see that. Okay, so this sticky target distance um, over here. So what we'll do is we'll do an if, and what we can do here is actually a vector three dot distance. So we're going to calculate the distance between two transforms, um, two positions. Sorry. So we want our target. Uh, no, sorry, we'll do ours for, uh, forced first. Uh, Transform.position and then our target. So we'll do target.transform.position. We'll just say if that is less than, um, not start attacking, sorry, I thought I copied it. If that is less than our sticky target distance. Or actually we'll say if that is greater than our sticky tar target distance. Um, and then what we're basically going to be doing is adding relative force to our rigid body. So I'm going to create another variable. So this is actually the speed we actually want our character to move towards the target. So we'll create another public float. We'll say sticky target speed or am amount. We'll set that to one by default as well. I'll ever play in the inspector because I don't really know um, what this is going to turn out like. Okay, here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get our character rigid body dot add relative force. So the force we're going to be adding is basically just uh, moving the character forward. Um, the reason we could just move our character forward is because we're facing target. Um, so our character should forward should be facing the target. So we're going to do vector three dot forward and we'll times that by the sticky target amount and the force mode we'll just set to um, just force okay all right I'm going to create an else we'll say is face target equals false 
Okay, so if we're attacking and we're grounded and um, we're in target mode, it will set is facing target to true. So this um, this will add another if to this later once we actually have some guns because we're only really going to do this if we don't have guns and we start attacking. So we'll basically check if there's anything equipped. Okay, so when we start attacking here, here we go, it's attacking, where we start attacking. Uh, what we'll also do inside that event, start attacking here. I'm going to set is target mode. Is it true? Okay, and what we're going to be doing is setting that to false after our combat timeout. So again, I'm going to scroll back to the top. I probably should have done all these at the same time. I'm going to create a public float for combat time out or combat cooldown. But now we'll just set it to two. Okay, and a private float for current combat cool down. Okay, so what we'll do inside our combat, we'll create a public calculate combat. And for now, what we'll do inside, oh, a public void, calculate a combat. And inside here, what we'll do is we'll just check if uh, current combat cooldown is less than zero. We'll just say uh, minus equals time dot delta time. And then where we have our, uh, our event, to basically set uh, is attacking to false. Here we'll say combat cooldown, uh, cur sorry, current combat cooldown equals combat cooldown. Just like so, so we reset the cooldown. what I'm actually going to do inside this calculate combat as well as if it's less than zero and we'll also say and and not is attacking okay then we'll also have an else And then inside here, we'll have our is target mode equals false. Okay. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to scroll down to here where we said if we're attacking and we're grounded and it's target mode. I'm just going to get rid of this. Uh, we're going to add uh, an event. So if we go to animator, go back to our layers, to our melee. From any state, we'll make a transition to empty. And the condition for that transition will be is falling. No, it's just called falling. Because basically we want to stop our punch if we start to fall. So what we'll also do here is... Um, just beneath all this, I'll say if is falling. And then if we're falling, we're going to set is target mode to false. And we're also set our is attacking to false. All right. So let's uh, go in and see what this looks like. So I'm going to click on fill, 
we're going to come back cooldown set to 2. Okay, so that's fine for now. Now we're going to hit play. And see, we have our normal movement. And if I left click now, go into combat mode, look at the character for a little bit. And fingers crossed, no, because we didn't put in the update. Okay. Um, I have a habit of doing this as well. <laughs> our calculate combat. We need to pop that into our update. So I'll do it beneath calculate sprint. So that we're actually checking the uh, cooldown timer. All right. So we attack. Looks like it just triggered instantly. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make that a the current combat cooldown a public for now. 